You're listening to episode 23 of the Master Your Mind, Business, and Life podcast. We live in a culture that emphasizes phrases such as, bigger is better, or better to have too many than not enough. We often need reminders that sometimes less is more, and bigger isn't always better. This week's guests prove this, but before I introduce you to tiny home owners Tim and Sam, let's go over our review of the week. This week's review comes from Tink7713, and it reads, There's nothing held back. Being vulnerable with your failures makes things so much more relatable. Looking forward to hearing more. I'm not the only one who has gotten vulnerable on this podcast. My guests continue to do it weekly. I'm really trying to take a page out of their book. So your review is really encouraging me to be bolder. Thanks for sending this in, Tink7713. If you want to have your review highlighted, leave one on iTunes or your favorite podcast app, and I'll choose one weekly to review. Your reviews help others find this podcast, and as you can tell, they serve as great feedback for me. You'll also find that your reviews get highlighted on my website as well as on Instagram at MindBizLife. This episode is sponsored by my friends at Windstorm Products, the best place online for your hurricane and shutter installation tools, hardware, and construction fasteners. Visit windstormproducts.com and get $5 flat rate shipping on your order. Okay, are you ready to meet the owners of Tiffany the Tiny Home? You know what to do. Tune in, turn it up, let's go. You're listening to Master Your Mind, Business and Life. Conversations with everyday world shifters, truth seekers, and rule breakers. Here's your host, Lauren Smith. Hey everyone, it's Lauren Smith. Welcome back to another episode. I'm really excited to introduce you to Tim Davidson and Sam Cosner. Tim and Sam decided to join the tiny home movement when they moved into their bungalow named Tiffany. Tim and Sam, and of course, Tiffany, have been featured on HGTV, AOL.com, Mind Body Green, Business Insider, oh, just so many. And even though Sam and Tim's home is tiny, their dreams are big. I am so intrigued with this lifestyle that I can't wait any further to dive into this conversation. So Tim, Sam, welcome to the podcast, and thank you both for joining me today. Hi, Hi thanks everyone. for having us. Well, there's a few reasons that I invited you guys on the show. The main reason is I think your lifestyle is so freaking awesome that I just want to learn more about it, but also because I find your journey in life just as intriguing. So first things first. How did you guys come up with the name Tiffany for your beautiful blue tiny home? Well, Tiffany, uh, Adam from the New Beginning Tiny Homes uh, uh, originally built uh, our house. And it, if you if you look at the house, it's a nice Tiffany blue. Um, but I uh, am a sales rep for a lighting manufacturer. And uh, if you go into Tiffany, you'll see the lighting and there's stained glass. And so like a Tiffany and comfort uh, Tiffany, uh, comfort kind of style as far as uh, stained glass goes. So with all the blues and the stained glass, Tiffany just kind of seemed to stick. Uh, and then it, Tiffany, the tiny home rhymes. So that's, yeah. that's always helpful. <laughs> it just, it just felt right then, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah yep. So what did life look like for you guys before you decided to move into Tiffany, the tiny home? Were you guys living in an apartment, a full-size house? What what did that all look like? Uh, it was pretty normal, I would say, for people in their 20s. I was living in a 500-square-foot bungalow in uh, Florida, and then Tim was living in his parents' house down here. And um, yeah, it was pretty typical. I Even in that 500-square-foot um, little house, we found that I had a lot of space that I didn't use and just junk was accumulating in that space. And then I had to clean it and blah, blah, blah. And it was just really frustrating for us to have all this unused space. Um, so I guess it was um, a combination of a lot of things that led to us going tiny, but yeah, it was pretty typical, um, normal lifestyle. We've got, we've both got nine to five jobs. Um, Tim, like he said, is a lighting sales rep and I, I'm a personal trainer. So We've both got, you know, um, pretty normal, typical jobs that are in one location. Well, Tim's kind of all over Florida, but I'm in one location. So, yeah, it was. it's still a fairly normal life, just a lot smaller. But even before um, 
we travel a lot. We like to be outside. We, you know, we haven't changed much except for the space that we live in. So what made you guys decide to live more minimally? Um, I think it's a, a combination of things. You know, everybody has their story of how they, they grow up and, and they go through life and experience different things. And we we noticed, um, you know, the keeping up with the Joneses really wasn't kind of our thing. And we never were into that. And um, we found that uh, the more stuff we wanted, the more we had to work, the less things that uh, we could could do on the side or um there's a lot of stress with a lot of the mentality of consumerism and you know the marketing that we're always being advertised to uh and it is as much as it was coming in we were pushing against it and uh it uh, eventually got to a point where we said well let's let's make this more extreme and, and see what we're able to, to, to live without and what we can get rid of and make this more of a process of, uh, getting away from materialistic things. I mean, we have unnecessary things like, you know, like, a uh, you know, a game boy or things like that, but we also, uh, have a lot less than what an average person would, would have. So, um, and once we start getting rid of a lot of our stuff, I me and Sam both realized a lot of our anxiety went away. I think, um, you know, everyone has anxiety. It's a, it's a thing, but, um, the less stuff we had, the better we felt. And I don't know if that's less clutter in our heads or, or what that, how, how that plays out. But it, we, we noticed that there was more benefit of stuff. It, there was more benefit when we got rid of, you know, as much as we could. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. I'm I'm also just a clean house person. So I my mm-hmm. headspace isn't right if my house is messy um, or if there's too much stuff. 100%. I I don't I'm not attached to material things. I know some people are and Christmas just happened and a lot of people got an overload of stuff for Christmas. Um, mm-hmm. So for people yeah. who, who might be attached to things, what was your process for downsizing your pos- possessions in the beginning? Did Were you like, this won't fit and that was just an easy way to let go? Or how did that all work for you? We, When we decided, really, really decided that we were going to go tiny, we gave ourselves 60 days to get rid of as much as we could. Our goal when we moved into our tiny home was to move in with four boxes total. Wow. And we hit that. Yeah, it was very extreme for sure. So I think we're more the exception than the rule um, in the downsizing. But the process of downsizing itself really wasn't bad. I mean, within that 60 days, we got rid of, we estimate, um, 80% of our belongings. Um, and we sold a lot of it. We donated a lot of it. We gave it away to family. Um, we threw some of it away. Like, you know, you can't really donate old socks, you know? So, right. um, however, however we could get rid of it, we did. So, um, you know, it's, it was tough, um, for some things, especially like, um, when we travel, we like to get knickknacks, just that's something that we really enjoyed doing. And we had to get rid of a lot of that stuff and also get rid of that habit. So, um, you know, some parts are definitely harder than others, but at the end of the day, all that it comes down to, it really boils down to a, what if, you know, for me, especially like I had a lot of clothes and I realized during the process of downsizing my closet, a lot of what I was holding on to was just a, what if, you know, what if I need these pants? What if I need this dress? What if, I, what if, what if and it's like, I haven't worn it in a year that what if hasn't happened yet. So right. there is no what, you know what I mean? It's all, it's all just in your mentality and just kind of releasing and, and relaxing and knowing that if that what if does happen, you can go out and get that pair of pants and you can go out and get whatever. But, but actually needing something is usually not the case. Yeah. That's really four boxes, man. I'm just kind of like looking around my house and like, whoa, <laughs> four boxes. <laughs> so what made you guys choose a tiny home over say a traditional RV? Um, so uh, we get this question quite a bit as far as like, a lot of people look at the price of the tiny houses and goes, Oh, that's outrageous. You can get a real nice RV. Um, there's a couple things with that one in RV, uh, it, they're manufactured homes. Um, as far as like, uh, 
I work on the manufacturing side of lighting. So we make lights or an RV manufacturer makes an RV and they say, okay, how do we cut costs? How do we do this? Uh, in order to get it at a certain price level in order to mass produce it. So RVs are mass produced. Uh, they probably uh, don't have the best insulation. Uh, structurally wise, um, they they are able to cut corners in certain areas. Are there nicer uh, RVs than, than I'm describing? Probably. But as far as a... Um, price level um it it made more sense to buy a, a, ti- a traditional tiny home um it's our tiny house has uh, a hundred or, or a seamless stem roof metal roof on it so we have quality products on our tiny house it's, the roof itself is rated at 180 mile an hour wind uh, there's hurricanes the two by fours um it's it feels more of a home than uh what an rv feels like uh as far as the construction, how it's constructionally built. Um, and, uh, a lot of that's overlooked as far as, um, comparing the two, but, uh, and with a tiny house, you can, you can make it for what it is. You go to an RV place and they have model A, B, and C. Well, a tiny house is like, okay, here's a trailer. Like, what do you want to do with it? Mm. Kind of thing. So, So um, that's really why we chose it. Did your builder design the bungalow for you specifically or how exactly does that, that process work? Yeah. So, so Adam, uh, built a, uh, built Tiffany. Um, it was probably about 90% built. So we, we didn't have a lot of say in, in what it, uh, it, the, the end result was, but we fell in love with what he did cause he's, he is good at what he does. But, um, if, if, if people are looking for tiny houses, yeah, I mean, you could start, with any builder and say, Hey, I, let's build a custom tiny house. And they can, uh, they might have a couple, they might have a couple, um, floor plans available, but you can also tweak and, and, and customize it to really whatever you want. Yeah. That's really cool. So the stained glass windows, they, they, was that already part of the tiny home when you guys saw it? Yep. Yep. That was a, that, that was a handmade, um, uh, piece. I, I know Adam outsourced that to one of his buddies who does stained glass uh, windows for a living. So um, I, we have one on the front door, we have one in our pocket door, and we have one in our guest loft, which is pretty cool because the way that our house is positioned, um, since it is on wheels and we're able to move it, uh, we can uh, direct our tiny house towards uh, when the sun rises. So when the sun rises, uh, that that light actually comes through those stained glass windows and we, we wake up with different colors on the walls and the ceilings and, and uh, it adds a, a little bit more character to the tiny house, which is another advantage over, let's say, a traditional RV. Oh, how beautiful. So what has been the biggest mm-hmm. challenge of tiny home living? Um, we get this question a lot and it's always super hard to answer because like we are pretty psyched about our life, not just, you know, <laughs> humble brag. <laughs> so it's hard to answer. I mean, definitely there are some difficulties like there are, and, and more of just adjustments to be made in um, transitioning into time living. So like things like uh, doing the dishes by hand, that was an adjustment mentally, um, you know, getting rid of stuff that was an adjustment mentally. But I guess um, the, the best answer that I would be being intentional with our time and our space. Um, we have very good inside space and, Because of that, you know, there are not any doors to close between us. So our communication improved a lot. It had to. Um, And we had to be very intentional with taking personal time. So, you know, um, you know, if one of us needs alone time, we have to be, it's usually outside. um, And we have to be clear about, you know, like, what am I doing for me? And what does my me time look like? And what am I doing? So um, just making the shift from kind of having built in me time. If someone's in the living room and someone's in the bedroom in the big house, you know, that's your me time. But in the tiny house, it's more, you must be more mindful. So that I would say would be, you know, one of the challenges that we faced in transitioning into tiny living. I saw that you guys recently got a dehumidifier for your tiny house house and uh, was, was finding products such as that, that are small and fit in spots. Has that been a challenge as well? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, every 
and to to uh, it's ironic you talk about the dehumidifier because that's the one item that we actually bought a normal size of uh, for once, which was oh, kind of really? awkward. Um, yeah, but uh, but 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 finding things that, that fit in the tiny house without a doubt, it is a custom home, so um, we don't have a standard shower. Let's say um, we we Sam had to uh, she's pretty good at uh, like sewing and things like that, so she had to cut a normal shower curtain in order to make it fit into our shower. Uh, that way it was a little bit smaller and wider and how that all worked or, um, we do. Yeah. We, so we, dev- and we piggyback off certain things. We use a lot of, uh, you know, we have a, a kitchen, uh, we use kitchen, um, foldable storage or things like that. That's made for the kitchen, but we use it, let's say to hold like shoes or things, things of that nature. So, uh, finding products is is sometimes a challenge, but uh, where there's a will, there's a way, and and uh, there's there's something out there. And this might be a crazy question, but I just I literally don't know the answer. Is there any type of store that specifically sells products for tiny homes? I don't I don't think so, but that's a wonderful idea. I think that <laughs> if not. I do, I do think that a lot of stores carry like tiny friendly stuff, like everywhere has like space consciousness in mind. That's definitely where the mindset of, you know, um, you know, where young people's minds are shifting to. So I do think that, you know, stores are catching up and accommodating that, but I would love like a specific tiny house product store. I would love that. Yeah. I, I thought like that would just make life so much easier too. And I'm sure you guys probably also see other, other people who live in tiny homes and products that they're getting. And that probably helps brainstorm some things as well. Oh yeah, for sure. There's a really strong community and there's a lot of sharing of like, what do you use that works? What do you have that you love? What did you try that didn't work? So there's a lot of idea sharing in the tiny house community for sure. So when it comes to clothes, how much clothes do you guys actually have? Because you can't fit a lot. So what does your wardrobe look like? Do you want the actual item by item list? Because you could do that. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's that small, you could do item by item. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have, I, I roughly have, uh, I, I know I bought a couple shirts uh like last month, I think it was because I, I found out that I, I could add a couple more, but I roughly have probably about 12 shirts. I have one pair of jeans. I have two pairs of shorts. I have one pair of dress slacks. Um, I have uh, seven pairs of some underwear. I have six, six, or six or seven pairs of socks and then about uh, five pairs of dress socks, enough to basically get me through the week because we're going to do laundry. So why have more? Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, all, all my whole closet's actually three drawers that are built into the stairs. So we have stairs that lead up to the master loft. Um, and in those stairs are three, uh, drawers that I'm able to use. And that's my quote unquote walk on closet. And I know Sam has, uh, three drawers. She has a little bit no, more. Two. I, two I, drawers. Yeah, yeah. I have a little bit more. My drawers are a little bit bigger than Tim's. So I have a little bit more clothes than he has, but still just bare minimum. I mean, like it's just the essentials. It's like, I, it's, I tell people and it's really true. Um, I wake up every day and that's it. That's all that we have is just our favorite stuff. That's all we have room for. So yeah, it's bare minimum around here, which is nice. And it's kind of easy being in Florida. We don't have like bulky winter jackets and snow pants and, you know, like the bigger items that take up a lot of space. Yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't even have a pair of sneakers. I just wear sandals because it's easier that way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break and get a word in from our sponsor. As mentioned earlier, this episode is sponsored by Windstorm Products. You might be wondering how Windstorm is relevant to this episode. Well, Tim and Sam used Windstorm products to help make their tiny home hurricane safe. A post shared by Tim and Sam on Facebook reads, What a massive weight off our chest knowing we are prepared for a future hurricane that will eventually come our way. These stainless steel female anchors sit flush with our window trim in order to quickly bolt on our panels. When we aren't using them, we are able to put paintable nylon caps on them in order to hide them a bit better to make sure Tiffany is still sitting pretty as usual. 
Windstorm product sells hurricane protection hardware that is code approved to provide the type of protection needed for businesses and homes, and yes, even tiny homes, in high risk storm areas. I know the owner of Windstorm products personally, and I am proud to back this company. Head over to windstormproducts.com today and receive $5 flat rate shipping on any order. It is never too early to prepare your home or business for a storm. So um, I know you guys recently purchased Shellmate Island. Can you guys tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, we just per- per just an a, a acre and a half uh, piece of land out in um, Ser- South Sarasota. It's about three miles from Siesta Key. Um, there's, it is, we're calling it Shellmate Island. Um, it's kind of a, a little pet name that me and Sam had when we first started dating. And, and it is surrounded by water and what. What we're doing with that is um, with Tiny Living, you know, we bought Tiffany, um, I think it was a year and a half ago. Uh, we got a year and a half to pay her off. So a huge benefit of Tiny Living is that um, I will have uh, no mortgage on Tiffany um, within the next year and a half. And we'll be able to save about 12 grand every month uh, wow. or every year, excuse me, for um, not having a mortgage. So Another benefit of um, tiny living is the whole craze of tiny living is obviously people want to try it or, or at least experience tiny living. So we're trying to create a passive income. We, with that land that we purchased, uh, we're going to be building another tiny house. Um, and uh, we put some building permits in two weeks ago and things are going pretty smoothly. And then what we'll be able to do is um, Airbnb that or create some passive income. So, um, on that property and, and the property is pretty cool. We got banana trees, mulberry, uh, mulberry tree, uh, three mango trees and avocado tree, uh, two fig trees. Um, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. So we're able, we're able, even with tiny living, we're able to create income, um, uh, with such a small space as, as odd as that sounds. No, another right. goal I, I would say with the Shellmate Island thing is to really give people that experience because had we not experienced what tiny living was like before actually purchasing our home, I'm not sure we would have taken the job. So what we did was we stayed in a tiny house that was a vacation home for a week to make sure that we were able to, you know, um, live well in a, in a safe. So we want to offer that to other people and give them that experience. Not only that, but having the use of outside space and really making sure people understand that like your outside space is your home too. Outside of your home, you live there too. So really incorporating outdoors with um, the tiny living thing. So really creating um, Shellmade Island to be indoor and outdoor experience and give people that um, kind of mindset of like, this is what it would really be like to live tiny. So that's, that's a big goal of ours with Chalmette Island. That is really cool because I I didn't realize that you guys had tried it out before you moved in. So I think that's almost that would be essential for me because how else do you really know if a lifestyle mm-hmm. is for you unless you can try it out? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So will that tiny house that you're putting on that one, will that also be on wheels so you can move it around or is that going to be a little bit more stationary? Um, it's going to be on a foundation. Um, the, the caveat with tiny, tiny houses is that is that since it is such a new movement, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, gray areas with them. So, um, this one will be on foundation because, uh, Sarasota County, although they don't have a minimum square footage law that, uh, is required for a dwelling unit, uh, it is required to, uh, be on a foundation. And I think that partially is due to obviously hurricanes. Um, so, you know, we get a lot of a lot of feedback as far as like, oh, I wish I could live tiny. I wish I could do that. I wish, you know, uh, and I think we've done it obviously with the, the one on wheels. Now we're going to do it one on foundation. And I think that will help prove to people like, hey, you can do both depending on your area. You don't have to go far and, and both are accessible and, and doable. And we've done both of them in the, in the past, you know, two years now. So do you guys also have um, your laundry built into your tiny home or do you have to go to like a laundry mat for that or family or friends? 
We actually have a two-in-one. It's a washer and dryer in one. Um, I actually posted a review about it not too long ago. Um, it's awesome. It's the best. This is what a lot of European countries and Asian countries use. It both in one. So it washes and dries and you can set it so that it does like it goes right from the wash cycle to the dry cycle. It does take a little bit longer um, to uh, to do a full wash and dry, but the clothes are clean. They come out dry. What more could you want? It's awesome. It's also um, energy efficient, which is a huge priority of ours. So yeah, it's, it's a tune one and it's awesome. I would really recommend it. Right. And you're probably not having big loads of laundry because you don't have that many clothes. <laughs> so it's not like exactly. massive <laughs> yeah. loads that get built up. Right. Exactly. So, and, and then what's I, even better is that. Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just going to say when we move on to the island, we're going to have a clothesline. So that's even less energy oh. used. It will be really nice. So is it, I assume it's also equipped with air conditioning. Does it also have heat? Yep, yep. So it's a, a mini split uh, unit. So what that means is have a uh, inverter on the inside, uh, and that is uh, kind of like let's say half of the AC, and the other half is on the outside. So uh, we have a, like an LG smart one. We can control it from our phone. Tiffany's all uh, voice activated, and it is a smart home, so we can control a lot of that stuff from our you know smartphones or computers or whatever. Um, but yeah, it does. It does have heat. The heat ran off of uh, our two propane tanks, uh, same propane tanks that you get for your grill. Um, and at, actually right now it's in Florida, so it, it's chilly for us. So with the heat that actually on now, um, just to kind of take that chill away, but yeah, it does, it does both. Yeah. We're, I, I feel like in Florida this week, we're experiencing all four seasons in one week. Like it, it was hot last weekend and then now it's freezing. And so you got, I was, like, I, was, I was wondering if you had heat because I have my heat on in my house, but I am cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Yep. yep, for sure. So where and, have you and guys- the, the whole yep. our house is spray foam insulation. So oh, that's it's cool. a very tight seal. So uh, that makes it energy efficient. So we actually don't have to run our AC or heat throughout the whole day because it keeps it nice and compact and, oh, and airtight wow. sealed for the most part. That is, that is really awesome. So where have you guys traveled with Tiffany? Just throughout Florida or have you guys gone elsewhere? Before, before we bought our home, Adam had taken it to a couple of shows. Um, he went to just up along, you know, along the East Coast. He went to um, Georgia. I think it was. Where else did he go with with Tiffany? Uh, there was a couple other spots, but um, typically the only time we we're, when we travel with Tiffany will be for like a tiny house festival. Uh-huh. Um, United uh, Tiny House Festival. They're pretty big on the East Coast. I know John and Finn uh-huh. um, run those, and they are. Uh, if you if you ever get a chance to go to one, they are um, such a spectacular organization and. Uh, uh, we typically, so we'll typically take her to festivals just to try and spread the movement and have people come in our house and show what we're able uh, to do with our house. And then you, they get to see other houses as well. And a lot of people get ideas and we start making friendships and it's a nice time where we're able to, to interact with other tiny houses because we don't get to, you know, we don't run into many people that live in them. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So do you think that other people could benefit from this type of living? I think so. I think that it's smart to consider your options, especially when you're young and you want to buy a home. Cause that was, that was really the deciding factor for us with our long-term financial health. Um, and I mean, mental health too. It just, it plays such a role, your space, your safe place, your, your sacred space, you know, where you call home, it plays such a role in your life. So honestly, it's worth exploring. I do think that for us, it was exactly the right decision. I think that for a lot of other people, um, considering a lifestyle like this can, you know, it can really open some doors for you just, um, yes, financially, but also in a lot of different things. So for us, it was exactly the right decision. I do think that um, more and more people are gravitating towards this and just realizing that like the, the external things don't really play a role in your happiness. You know, you don't really need stuff to be happy. What you need is a happy home and, and, you know, in internal happy. So I really do think that, um, you know, the shift is at least beginning. Um, yeah. And I do, of course, I believe that other people can, can benefit from tiny living. Absolutely. 
Do you ever see yourselves moving back to a, what I'll call a traditional home? Maybe, maybe someday if we have a family and we, and it calls for that possibly, but not, not anytime soon, I don't think. Yeah. Do most of the people that you meet on your journey, are they mostly like couples or have you met anyone with families who also do the tiny home living? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we, the cool part about tiny home living is everyone's so different, whether it's normal people or, or, um, you know, you know, the typical crunchy hippie they're, they're, we're all, we're all there and we're all doing the same thing. So we, yeah, we met, uh, we met a, a bunch of people that are, uh, have families, whether it's one kid, I know, uh, there's one, uh, a tiny house family in, in California, I think it is, they have four kids, uh, in a, wow. in a tiny house. So yeah. And, uh, it's every, everything farm in between old, old people, young people, uh, retirement people, uh, find seem to find it a little fascinating and then you have your typical um you know bus life nomads that are traveling around from you know park to park or or whatever the case is so yeah there's a there's, there's a there's a, good, there's a good collection of people yeah i was just thinking about what sam said with the the outside is also your home and i think i would have to tell my kids to go outside all the time <laughs> if I was in a tiny yeah. Home. Yeah. <laughs> go outside <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and it's not a bad thing. You, you know, I, I I love technology and stuff, but, you know, a lot of people say it's taking over other people's lives. So I think the more we get out there, the better. But uh, there's there's a good balance between it all. Yeah, mm-hmm. just the ability to unplug, too, is, is really beneficial in life. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So last question for you guys. What is next in this grand adventure of life? So we know about Shellmate Island. What other big plans do you guys have? Hmm. I think for me personally, my, my long-term goal is to work remotely, work from anywhere. Um, so that, that's already in the works. Um, as for our tiny house journey, we're kind of just tackling Shellmate at all most if not all of our energy is going towards that right now. So that's our, that's a huge hurdle for us. So that's where most of our focus is, I would say. What about you, Tim? Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, getting that, that up and running to show people that tiny living uh, not only can benefit your, your life, but uh, as far as mentally and in your lifestyle, but also creating income or, or things like that. I think that is our, our goal in, in trying to get, that business up and running right now. So we uh, kind of show people there's tiny living has so many different avenues and benefits other than the typical stuff you see. So. Oh, I love it. Well, will you tell our listeners where they can learn more about you and how they can follow along with your journey? Absolutely. We have a Facebook and Instagram, both of which we are taking you to tiny home. And then that's also the name of our website where you can find our blog um, we do uh, two to four blog posts a month, and we do things like product reviews, lifestyle, travel, all that kind of stuff. We blog about it all. So, um, yeah, that's where you can find us. Perfect. Well, thank you again, Tim and Sam, for joining me. I have enjoyed learning about your tiny home lifestyle, and I look forward to seeing more updates on Shellmate Island. Thanks. Thank you so much. I absolutely adored this conversation with Tim and Sam. Seriously, how cool is their tiny home lifestyle? You really need to follow them on social media because not only is their tiny home Tiffany so stinking cute, but they also share tiny home hacks and it gives you a great glimpse into their tiny home lifestyle. I've included direct links to their social channels on this week's episode notes found at mindbizlife.com. Thanks again to this week's sponsor, Windstorm Products, for being our first official sponsor. Head over to windstormproducts.com to learn more about this great company and the products they have to offer. Want to sponsor an episode or know someone who might? Check out the sponsorship tab on my website, mindbizlife.com, or shoot me an email at hello at laurensmithbiz.com. I'll see you back here next week, and until then, remember, every level of life is an opportunity to grow. Be well, my friend.